Very cool. Very nice. Definitely a sponge, yeah. Wow. Cool. That's awesome. Okay, we'll rack back all the way. Okay. Ready. Yeah, let's go starboard because I think there's going to be less stuff put in there. Can you turn on your uh, SPL com? Uh, do you want me to close it halfway? Just because it's not a deep box anymore? Um, let's see how we... Just hope it sinks fairly well. You can just tell that from tipping it upside down. I I'm just hoping that when I oh let go, you're it, hoping it yeah yeah it yeah drifts down, and I can try and like put it in there, but I don't want to. Do you want me to close bad. the box and just follow you follow it in? Yeah, I'll see. I'll just do a little. Hopefully, it'll just settle down here. Yeah, let's let's do. A little bump in. Okay, let's stop there. Oh, not bad. Just get this hold on. It doesn't want to make a break for it. You want me to let me just try and brush it over from not being in the middle of the two? Oh, these flappy fingers. Okay, we're starting to get tugs from Argus. Okay. Can I pull yep. in? Yep. Okay. Oh yeah, we gotta. Yeah, you're gotta at seven meters there with Argus. Okay. And I am heading out. So Steve, this would still be a glass sponge, right? Like the silica based down here, or the could it um, interestingly, the the carnivorous sponges are actually demo sponges. Ooh, okay. Different group. They're not glass um, sponges. They're not filter feeding because they're carnivorous. What do you? How do you think they're catching their food, or what are they potentially eating down here? So, I. I'm not an, a sponge expert, <laughs> but I think um, so. They have these m like modified spicules, kind of like how you're seeing there, uh, that can be used to hook on to things like small crustaceans, or that you know small crustaceans get caught up in those spicules, mm -hmm. you know small hairs and you know. Yeah. Um, and then when they get sufficiently stuck, uh, there is a kind of like mucousy material that's secreted and bubble that surrounds the animal and slowly digests them over time. Wow. Crazy. Extracellularly. Hmm. Um, is it rock time? Rock looking time? Yeah. Whenever you are in a good place. Yeah, that's good. Well, let's get uh, back into a better position here. That one's a crinoid. That's a crinoid. Yep. Argus is done swinging, it looks like. I think so, yeah. yeah. We can get lasers back. Roger.
I'll have to go back and look and see if I can find a genus name for this Clatterizid, because I'm curious now. Cool. What's up? I was just saying, let's get back in a good position here. We're starting to look. This is a this is a better configuration here. Yeah. Okay, Steve. We're looking for rocks. All right, looking for rocks. So we we're looking for a crusty rock, some uh, type. But so um, these are all things that have broken off this like lobate flow here. Yeah. Is that what you're looking for? I, I think that'll be fine. I think that's what's here. Yeah, yeah. We okay. don't want to go too far. So you know, something that uh, can fit in one of the smaller partitions on the starboard side, so we don't take up too much big stuff. Okay. Maybe something in that little see, cluster yeah. right there below us. I yeah. see. So there. that's exactly where I'm looking to. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably going to be flat, crusty stuff. That's that's okay because I think that's like you said the best we're gonna get. Even if uh, this stuff is so friable, you can probably even break a piece. Um, can't tell if this is two rocks, but that that piece is a candidate potentially also. Anything in front here. We can break it. I'm pretty sure it's consolidated mud. Let's go for this one. Yeah, the one right in the middle there. Sorry, I'm gonna float up a bit. The marble I was perched on collapsed. There you go. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I don't have ZBIAS on anymore. I'm going to back off for a second, Josh. Sure. Yep. The, the marble I was perched on started sure. sliding downhill. You just slide over to the right, probably. Yeah. I'm sure we'll grab some over there. Maybe some better purchase here. All right, so that, that actually could be the, in the genus Clatteriza, which would be really neat. Probably the type, the type genus for the family. Clatteriza. This is off of California. Is that just too much crust? Do you want something different than that? I think that's fine. It'll fit in one of the small partitions, right? I think so. Yeah. As long as there's some exposed surface, wasn't totally buried. I think that'll be fine. I plucked it right off the top of. I think that'll fit, a small one. All right. No, no visible associates, it's fine. Okay. Great.
Ready for sample salvo? Sure. We all all clear at the moment? Um they're clear except for Delta. So preferably okay. not Delta. Okay. Go for C. It's a quick check. That's fine. And I guess we want water then? Yes, water would be great. One through five are open. I think that would trigger. Um, I didn't see it. No, but you think it would? I moved it quite a bit there. Not going to go past that little brass clip there. I wonder if it was rigged. Not quite right. That should trigger. That's pulled quite a bit. Oh, there it was. There it is. Oh, did it go? Yep, yeah. it just went. Oh. Huh. Okay. Oh, Weird. Right. Yeah. Snap back. All right. Guess I didn't rip it off. Okay. We got everything we need here. Yeah, I think we're good. Thank you. Great. Uh, the two sample numbers on those rocks and water were? Uh, sample numbers 108 and 109. 108, 109. Great. Fantastic. You have auto XY? All right. I can put a move in. We're going to be heading towards 320. You're, mute, you're muted. I'm just going to check. I'm just going to put the crop power on just to check it. Once can it we go 50 back. meters bearing 320? Thank you. Can you give me the porch on yeah. bubble?
There are a few records of that genus from out here. Science Steve just delegated me as watch lead, but I think we only have a couple of minutes. So if there's anything <laughs> fun and crazy we want to do, he's gone. <laughs> there's not that much to look at here, though. Go for Zoom. Ooh, an enemy, looks like. Okay, go wide. Giving that 360 camera another shot. 
Not sure I did it right the first time. I feel like we're not making much progress today. <laughs> how, how far have we come since we started the dive? Uh, or our watch? It, we had sample 135, and we started just a little bit before that. Um, not quite 500 meters. <laughs> oh, no. We are slacking. Oh, man. Not We've seen a lot of really cool things. Not going to be backing peaks at this rate. I know. But we bagged a species. That's true. That's way cooler. <laughs> it has been very good sponge. for uh, for what we thought it was going to be. Has that uh, sponge been sampled before, Steve? Um, that's what we're trying to figure out. Uh, you know, I. Go for zoom. There are some records. If it is in the genus Glatteriza, it there are some records from around here. Uh, Sorry. But I don't know if it, what they look like or if they're collections or if they're just um, uh, video observations. We'll have to see. Go away. Looks like the taxonomy of the clatterizids is also quite messy. Bridge, now. Can we keep that move going? 50 meters, bearing 320. Thank you. Go for Zoom. That's a glass sponge now. We saw something like that shortly after we got on watch. It's very macaroni. young. It's tough to tell. I, I vote macaroni. <laughs> Go wide. Tiny macaroni. We're a little deep for macaroni. Oh, okay. Could be in the same family, though. Okay. I didn't realize that macaroni had a characteristic depth. Yeah, it's a uh, typical. Well, the thing that we had been calling macaroni sponge was uh, shallower than twenty five hundred or so. Okay. Maybe even shallower than that. Shallower than two thousand, maybe. What does Probably. a sponge have to do differently if it's going to live deeper? Just be more efficient, be better with less food, or? Um, you know, I I don't I don't think there's one particular characteristic. Uh, you know, we, we see glass sponges quite deep. Um, I think it just it depends on if the substrate is available, um, if the current flow is good in that area. You can probably find them pretty deep. Um, they might just be smaller. Okay. But I don't I don't think they're I you know, I don't know what the hard limits of sponges are if you know they're if they're energetically taxed. Uh 
because the silica horizons are often very, very, very deep, which is why we find glass sponges way deeper than a lot of corals. The what horizon? What? Silica what? S silica horizon. What so does that mean? The, the um, silica is present in seawater, right? Mm -hmm. but it is? Yeah, in a, in a solved state. Okay. Um, and as you go down through the water column, uh, changes in pressure and chemistry uh, change the solubility of certain types of minerals that, you know, calcium carbonate, for example. Um, let me take a look at what that would be for the North Pacific. I imagine it's pretty deep. So there's a point in the ocean where, um, where silica can become undersaturated um, relative t in the seawater. And uh, at that point, you would get things like uh, you know, silica uh, would be, I think it would be much harder for things with silica skeletons to um, precipitate that out of the water because there's just not much of it oh, okay. in, in solution. Uh, okay. But the it could potentially be very deep before that. It's very deep. Limiting. Yeah, it's okay. probably thousands and thousands of meters. Huh. It's basically like wanting to build wood houses where there's lots of wood. Yeah. Wanting to build concrete houses where there's limestone. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a lot more difficult if you have to you know. Yeah. If your house is being actively dissolved <laughs> oh, while, while you're trying to build it. That's what's happening. So, oh. like, it's not that it's difficult. I mean, it is difficult to precipitate in the first place, but the water is going to want to reuptake it. Right. Interesting. Huh. It's worse than trying to build a wood house where there's no timber. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like you actively have a group of yeah, you have beavers, you know, <laughs> eating eating your wood house <laughs> while you're trying to eat it, <laughs> while you're trying to live in it. Yeah. <laughs> beavers. I'm glad. I was gonna go with termites. Beavers okay. are far more charming. Uh, we're going charismatic megafauna. Yeah, here. yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised they've been sitting there for like 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, they just supply was running low. I'm going to go down a rabbit hole with the sili silica question. I can see it already. Um, Let's have it. This is I great. Want this, yeah. this is a great rabbit hole. <laughs> I can talk a lot about calcium carbonate, but I'm not sure how deep. Pretty complicated chemistry going on here. Are you in the dissolved silica rabbit hole right now? Yes. Okay. I should be really watching the dive. Oh, <laughs> keep me posted. I want to know more about. I'll keep you posted on the dive. You can keep me posted okay. on the uh, dissolved silica. Let me, let me know what you see. Okay. Now that I know what carnivorous sponges look like, I'll keep an eye out for those. Mm -hmm. I thought I was just passing a crinoid. Sure. I'll, I'll only look back at these papers while uh, while we're in soft sediment.
I'm over here reading the 360 See? camera manual. <laughs> uh, zoom. What? A little floating <laughs> sea cucumber. That is a sea cucumber. Yes. It's just bopping around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did it do that on its own? Yeah. Yeah. It did. I mean, I think I have barely been touching the sticks. It's just sort of, I don't know, going with the breeze. It's got some polyke associates on it on the bottom side. I decided which Bob Dylan song to reference. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Go for Zoom. <laughs> so many slow, options. This is slow motion. It's a, uh, <laughs> but you know, for a sea cucumber, it's very fast. Oh. That's true. <laughs> Just like he planned it. Perfect landing. Oh, deep sea animals are weird. <laughs> Go wide. <laughs> sea cucumber always lands on his feet, I guess. <laughs> you know, it probably does. I don't even think we're going to make it to a single waypoint this <laughs> watch. <laughs> we're like in between two and three. <laughs> You can, uh, yeah, let us know or give us, drop us a, a reminder once in a while. We haven't really spent a lot of time stopping. We've had That's like a few samples. True. Like yeah. we've been moving the whole time. Like we're not lollygagging too much. I think it's been very productive. I am so excited about the carnivorous sponge. Me yeah, too. I am too. Very cool. And silica horizons. <laughs> <laughs> It just sound so glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know the exact textbook I have in my desk too, where I can find this information. Just silica chemistry. Silica chemistry of the seawater. What? It's not in your coffee table. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that, that's, that's the other one. That's currently occupied by the fecal cast. The fecal cast right. chapter <laughs> of the yeah. <laughs> You might not want to come over to my house. <laughs> <laughs> it can't You're be any welcome. weirder than the rest of ours. Yeah. You're all welcome. You just yeah. might not want to. <laughs> Did you say you were moving soon? <laughs> Did I? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said you were moving to New York. Oh, yeah, no, that was a while ago. We were established. Like days ago, weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Time has no meaning. I think I got confused because of the whole BU. You're at BU, but you're in New York. I don't feel like I understand why we've only seen one carnivorous sponge this entire two cruises, or one of the, that species. We, apparently, we saw another individual on 1897 or 1887. Oh, okay. Um, but it was not uh, paid much attention to. It was imaged. Okay. Um, but I think there were some geologists in the seat at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Not to throw them under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll just throw them under the bus a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. They don't understand the magnitude of what they're seeing. <laughs> <laughs> 
Which cruise did you say that was? I think it was the first dive. Of this cruise? Yeah. 97 was the first one, right? We're on 1901. Yeah, so I, yeah, so the first dive of this it's cruise. All a blur. Yeah, first dive. So I was trying to record a one-hour clip with the 360 camera, but just realized that the maximum clip length is, is five minutes. Oh, five minutes. <laughs> no, no. So I can get to 25 minutes, I think, if I'm I okay with drop that. down to HD. <laughs> so we'll see if I can do that. I just keep glancing at Steve's screen and getting more and more excited for this lecture on silica we're about to get. <laughs> no, it's been a while. Oh, I've actually also I've pulled up the chief size screen. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, Wikipedia article. Yeah. Wow. Silicius, <laughs> silicious ooze. Is that how you say that? Silicious. Silicious. That makes more sense. As opposed to silicious, <laughs> which is something else. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, as I said that I'm so <laughs> some salacious <laughs> chemistry. Do, <laughs> Ew. do not look <laughs> do, yeah, do not look that up on Google. <laughs> Bridge, Too nap. late for me to be reading. <laughs> <laughs> All right, reset. Uh, Can we please keep this move going? <laughs> Fifty meters, bearing three to zero. So much information about diatoms in here, because I guess they're important <laughs> for, uh, wow. for silica, but nothing about sponges. For feeding yeah, the man, entire ocean. Yeah, you know. <laughs> for most of the primary production in the universe. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, diatoms and primary productivity is the topic of many... Okay. Uh, oceanography, intro to oceanography courses. Yeah. Kind of important, but I might have even absorbed some information about it. Yeah. It is interesting, but not the information I'm looking for. But not sponge related. Not sponge related. I'm I'm sure there's got to be a profile somewhere of. So why are you calling this? particular sponge a carnivorous sponge it seems like they're all carnivorous right or n i guess some are they just eat detritus like maybe dead like diatoms that sunk I'm, to the bottom i'm sure i'm sure they're probably have some generalistic tendencies but they're carnivorous in that they've been observed um to have uh dead crustaceans attached to them um Presumably because they were consumed, um, okay. and the carcasses just hang around. Oh, Bathysaurus, maybe upper upper left fish. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Oh, so they eat big things. Uh, relative to their size, you know, small amphipods, isopods, these types of small Go for zoom. crustaceans, not like crabs and things. Okay. They're not. Yeah. They're not going after the big stuff. They're going after things that they big. can grab on to. They're not eating bathysaurus. No bathysaurus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Looks delicious though. Is it bathysaurus? I can't quite make it out. I, th I think it is. I don't see the teeth.
Maybe it's just a weird angle. It is a weird yeah. angle. I'm going to say Bathysaurus, though. It looks yeah. exactly like the one we saw the other day. It, He's pretty mellow under the circumstances. Go for zoom. Maybe we got his good side this time. Something rolling around, though. Do you have any eyeballs? Uh, they do, but they're really reduced. This one looks very strange. I did, I th did think the eyes were slightly larger, but they do have eyes. They're just reduced. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, it looked like those eyes were. It like could be another over. another species I'm not familiar with. I think that, that imagery will be sufficient. Let's uh let's table this silica discussion so I can focus on the dive for next watch. That's fair. I'll get you a much better informed opinion. Or you can all just go on Wikipedia and tell me how wrong I was. Speaking of next watch, it sounds like we might have some blue water. <laughs> oh, perfect time oh, for yeah, a silica yeah. lecture then. Yeah. Yeah, then I great. really support you, Delay. Yeah. <laughs> what time will we do on deck? 7-ish? 7 p.m.-ish? Oh, that's later than I thought. If it's a 24-hour dive. So that's when we went in, right? That is a TBD on the board. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I think we might be coming up earlier. Roger. Depends on how you define afternoon. That's true. And then are we looking at an Argus only dive? Potentially, rumor yeah. Rumor has That's it. the rumor. Do we only get one of one ROV pilot at that point? Yeah, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. I'm going to be sad not to have both of you for our last dive. <laughs> What would you do, like, split the watch half and half? I don't know. We haven't even really talked about it yet. Mm. We're getting ahead of ourselves, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> to make it all happen first, I guess. Sounds like it could be deep. We'll have to do a little reconfiguring. So Steve, we haven't seen coral really at all, but we have seen coral at this depth before on other dives, right? Or at least yeah, some? we should probably be seeing maybe some very, very fine unbranched bamboo corals at this depth. Uh, I suspect it might actually be because of the sediment here or uh the rocky uh substrates are really kind of not very cohesive you know we saw cracks and fresh faces on some of these rocks the crusts are fairly thick but you know where they start to fail um it's tough for corals especially when they're growing this deep to deal with that Bunch of traces. Yeah, look at all of that. This 
This one really had a place, some place to go. <laughs> Just booking it. Bridge, Nav. We can go ahead and keep that move going, 50 meters, bearing 320. Yeah, I am surprised Thank you. at the slope that there is as much sediment as there is. It's not an insignificant slope. There's virtually no current. Yeah. Virtually no current. Well, I don't want to make any, like, really definite statements. I don't know for sure, but it's like, this is dead stick, just sort of hanging out. Yeah. Well, you know, we we were talking about, um, at the start of the watch, we kind of dropped in to a bit of an amphitheater, um, so it wouldn't surprise me, you know, if a lot of the currents were either coming from the west or the north east, um, on some of the other seamounts we visited, um, you know, where we have had strong currents uh, passing over some of these ridges, diving in the middle of an amphitheater or a hole, you're probably not going to see a lot until you get up on top of the ridge. Can we zoom out on high pack? Yes, of course. Yeah, so we're, we're still in kind of the amphitheater, not until we get up to Waypoint five, five or six, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll we be on the ridge. Got another hour and 20 minutes on our watch. Hopefully, we'll probably maybe be able to get up towards waypoint four-ish. Mm, maybe. Maybe optimistic. Can take a look at the fishes though. I guess that's the only thing to look at here. There's one right here. So I think it's my favorite fish right here. Go for zoom. This one Is might it a be tripod? A tripod, yep. Oh yeah. It's a yep. I sent home a tripod fish postcard when we were in port. Oh, well, you know what? Um, that would make sense. Uh, the last two fishes are probably were not Bathysaurus, but Bathythylops, which is a, another kind of tripod fish, okay. actually. That explains why the eyes were not very obvious, because they're very, very reduced or absent in some of the... Um, oh, wow some of the tripod fishes. What Bathy did you call it? Bathy what? Bathy thylops. Bathy thylops. There's like a cloud of sediment here that I didn't do. Oh yeah. Just here. Ooh. Weird. Weird. Was there a scuffle? I don't know. Signs of a struggle? <laughs>
a cucumber was here. <laughs> what makes you say that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know. A lot of this crust looks pretty broken. I think we're still kind of in that terrain where this is consolidated mud covered in crust. Bridge, Nav. Can we continue that move? 50 meters, 320. That's it. Thank you. Quiet. Steve, I got a question that just came in. What type of microorganisms live at this depth and what is the likelihood that they would survive at the surface? Microbes. Um, Go for Zoom. So there are all kinds of microbes that live down here, both in the sediment, on the rock, um, in the water. Um, Many of them are things you might find at the surface, you know, broadly speaking, like viruses and bacteria. Glass sponge there. Nice. 
Um, one of the things we tried to understand with the last expedition we did was try to um, figure out what kinds of microbes are living in and around the rocks uh, that might be associated with these crusts uh, so we can better understand kind of what their role is and chemical alteration of the okay. rock. Uh, and trying to at least get some baseline characterizations of microbial communities on rocky substrates down here. Um, without, yeah, it's it's tough to, to get into details of like specific groups of microbes uh, because I think it's very specific to the environment that you're in. Nice. Um, but a lot of the sm smaller microbes you find down here would probably not do too well at the surface. Um, the temperatures down here are very cold and very stable, and uh, organisms have adapted to that. And if you bring them up to another temperature or another um, environment, they'll typically degrade very quickly. But we'll have a, I think next season we'll have another microbes uh, related cruise coming up in the middle spring ish. Um, so stay tuned for that. Very cool. Won't give too, many, too much away, but it's going to be really, really fun. Back out in the monument, I think. Oh, nice. 